Good morning and welcome to the virtual worship service here at the Greater Hind Street Missionary Baptist Church. We are so glad that you have joined us this morning. This is a blessed morning and we just ask that you come right in and join with us as we lift the Lord our Savior in praise. We need you, O Heavenly Father, to share with us this morning this blessed day. We thank you. And we ask that you that are our listeners to join in and just help those that don't have this message, share it with them and come in and lift the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we go out this worship service today. Thank you again and welcome. Mm -hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbook, psalter, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of mine hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake and said unto his counselors, did not be cast in three men down in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. May God bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy and divine word. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, yes. how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings have thou ordained strength. When I consider the heavens and the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars that are ordained. But God, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visited him? Thou made him a little lower than angels. And have put thy crown on him with righteousness in your glory. That I made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Yes. No. Yes. And thou have put all things under his feet. Right. God, we are so grateful this morning. Yes, sir. For your grace and for your mercy. Thank you. Lord, we stand here at thy throne, Lord God. Yes. A week has gone by. But Lord, so much has happened in this last week. Yes, Lord. Lord, we've been through the storms. Yes, Lord. We have been without the basic necessities of life. 
Y'all, Lord, yet the sun still called your name on holy. Yeah. Who had to do without, do without even water, oh God. Yeah, but you said you are living water. Yeah. Yeah. If any man thirsts, let him ask of you. Right. He should never thirst again. Yeah. God, we just come once again to lift your holy name. Yeah. To give you praise yeah. and to thank you because you've been so good. For scriptures teaches us that we were created for praise. Designed for praise and created for worship. Lord, we just come to worship you this morning. We just love you, oh God. Lord, we just, no matter what's going on around us, we just look to you. Because we know all of our help comes from you, oh God. Lord, we pray for our community, we pray for our churches, oh God. We pray for our brothers and sisters. We pray even for this, our new administration in the White House, oh God. That you would give them the foresight, the strength in your spirit to lead your people in the way you have them to go. But Lord, we thank you for your holy word. Oh God, that we know in your word that's liberation. In your word that's life, oh God. In your word, that strength. We just thank you for your holy word, oh God, that we may be able to gather ourselves, oh God, and just run a little over on this journey. Thank you for the choir, oh God, who will run this own service this morning. We ask you to bless them right now, oh God. Oh God, we ask the Holy Spirit just to have your way with us this morning, oh God. Let your spirit flow, oh God, because we need you in this world, oh God. Lord, we thank you for the preacher. Strengthen him, oh God, and he makes ready to preach your holy divine word. We just thank you. We can't praise you, oh God. And Lord, we pray for this pandemic that we still find ourselves in. Lord, we know that everything still works together for the good for those who love you, who are called the Lord to your purpose. We won't need to understand, oh God, but we're going to look to you. We know you shall direct our path. We just thank you, God, and we thank you for the Son Jesus who died and we may have this problem. Lord, because in Him we move, we live, and we have our faith. So we just thank you, we love you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
The flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Amen. 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 And amen. Grass withers, flower thereof faded, but the word of God shall stand forever. I want to speak to us uh, this morning from the thought, lessons learned in the fire. Lessons learned in the fire. On last Sunday, we spoke to uh, to us from Psalm 137, where from the thought, hanging hearts and hopeless people. And we sought to leave inevitably on your minds that we will find ourselves in life sometimes uh, in a painful place uh, and in a painful posture. Sitting, sitting down by the river and in a painful predicament. And we also place in juxtaposition and side by side Jeremiah the 29th chapter, whereby God had written this letter through the pen of the prophet Jeremiah to warn them that you will be going into captivity because you have gone a whoring on me with other gods. And, and I'm going to send you down in Babylon. And while you're in Babylon, you need to pray for Babylon because your welfare is tied to Babylon's welfare. And he said unto them in, that, in uh, one of the verses, that 11 verses, for I know the thought that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And we argued that uh, since they have had a hearing, a notice from heaven, why would you be hopeless? Why would you hang hearts instead of singing songs, even in a strange land? Now we find ourselves, uh, some of the captives in our text today. So we find uh, some of the men in captivity now, they're in Babylon. And so this is the context of it. We are now in Babylon. And in Babylon, they, when they, in this deportation, that they took some of the best and brightest men at the behest, at the order of King Nebuchadnezzar. And he ramshacked Jerusalem, took uh, some of the, the, the gold and the silver utensils from the house of God, yeah. of the living God, and put them in the house of their God. They are playing God. And they used the best and the brightest men. And they were young men who were among the captives now who had arrived in Babylon. They were the best and the brightest. They were men of royal blood. They were the nobility of the house of Judah. Yeah, yeah. And King Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to learn the the language and the literature of these 
and be, to be well educated. He had them in a three year program. And uh, they were to learn many skills of, of endeavors and they were to be alert and they were poor and they were good looking, fine young men. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And in this three year training program, this three year brainwashing program, if you would, uh, then after graduation, that they would come before the king. And in the process, they, uh, that they, their names were changed. Their names were changed because there's power in the name. Because when your name is changed, then that shows ownership. Like us as a people of African descent, slave, we're children of slave. So when they brought us from uh, the west coast of Africa, and then they and brought us through the middle pass and brought us to, uh, to this wilderness of North America. They changed our name. You saw it in Alex Hayden's group then. Uh, and they wanted to change Kuta Kente's name to Toby. And so because when your name is changed, then that's your ownership. That they are on you. And so when my great grandparents who, who was sold into slavery and brought to North Louisiana in Tinsel, Paris, uh, the names were changed from our African name to Morris, and we were on Morris Plantation. All right. And so our name we're Morris. This is not my African name from now. Here from my a tribal name of the Yoruba tribe from Africa. But uh, it's Morris now. I've got the slave name. Yes. Because then uh, we have to go through that brainwashing process. And so then we have the images. Like, like what these boys were. They, they were given these images. And we were given images. So everything that was black was bad. And everything that was white was good. It's all right to tell a little white guy, but don't you tell no big black guy. Good white angel cake is good, but that devil cake, that's bad. And so it is with the process of an enslaved people. And then what they sought to do, they had a supervisor who was a eunuch. And this is in chapter 1 and, and in chapter 2. And we'll find out that Daniel is the spokesperson. In each one of the endeavors. So they gave up. So in chapter one, Daniel is speaking up because what they wanted to do, they wanted to change their diet. They, it's, it's with these biggest and brightest boys, uh, what they were going to do is you eat. The king said, You'll eat from my kitchen and drink wine. And so then Daniel steps up. He's a spokesperson. And he says, No, no. He says, He prevailed on the supervisor and you said, just let us eat vegetables and, and drink water for 10 days. The eunuch said, that's going to get me in trouble with the king, because if they come out pale, then it's going to be on my head. Right. And then, but he said, give me 10 days. And in 10 days, they were the brightest and the fairest and the brightest of all of them. And so this was a 10-day diet. But my sisters and brothers, we have to be careful with what we eat, because sometimes we eat too much of the wrong thing. And so the names were changed now from uh, Shep to uh, Daniel's name was Belshazzar. Yeah. Shadrach's name was Hananiah. Right. And Meshach's name was Meshach. Yeah. And Abednego became Azar, Asar, Asariah. Right. And so when we would, you have to be careful when names are being changed. Now the context of the text is, is that King Nebuchadnezzar build this golden image for them to bow down to. It was 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. And it was set up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Yeah. And so uh, here then the dedication ceremony came about. And so when the dedication uh, ceremony came about, Nebuchadnezzar summons all of the rulers in the providences of, of Babylon, all of the princes, the governors, the captains, the sheriffs, the, the traders, the rulers, all of them were summoned to this dedication ceremony. 
And so when they came to the dedication ceremony, so at the sound of the music, then everybody was to bow down. And then anybody who would not bow, then they would be in trouble with the king and would be thrown into the fire of That's where we are today. In chapter 1 and chapter 2, Daniel was the spokesperson. He even interpreted the dream in chapter 2. Daniel always stepped up and he was the spokesman for these young boys. Yeah. But now in chapter 3, yeah. Daniel is nowhere to be found. Right. Well, where was Daniel? Where? Where was Daniel now that the boys really needed him? Yeah. Right. And when we look at this, we will perhaps find ourselves in these situations. My Lord, tell me. Because there's a time when those who promise to be there for you in life were nowhere to be found. Those who promised many times in your lives uh, that they would be with you in the thick and thin. Right. And then when they got thick, they thinned out. Right. That's, right. That's in life we will find ourselves in, in, in times like this, my sisters and brothers, who are watching us uh, by way of media, sometimes when mom and dad may not be around, how will you handle your fire? Right. How do you, when the husband and wife may not be around, how do you Handle the fire furnace. And this is what we want to talk about today. What lessons do we learn when we're in the fire? But when pastor may not be accessible and your prayer partner may have gone to sleep on you, what do you do? How do you handle life in your in the fire furnace? In this, the time of crisis when you were asked, why is this happening to me? It was at those times when you can, nobody can help you. You can, you're at rock bottom. And then that's when you're at rock bottom. You find out that the rock can be the foundation that will propel you out of the fire. All right. The only way sometimes you, or somebody may have gotten a pink slip, <laughs> lost loved one, standing at a cold and chilly grave, and marriage about to be torn asunder, and you wonder, what is it that I have done to cause this race to be so hard to run. Hell down all on your trail yeah. and you can't even pay your bills and foolishness on your job. And sometimes you're about to give up, give in, and give over. Right. So this is what we want to talk about. Yeah. Today is, uh, it, it, it's, when we go through things like this in life, many times we will find, number one, God has a purpose. Yes. All right? yes. God has a you need a purpose mm -hmm. in what you're going through. And like even when your best laid plans have gone ashunder mm -hmm. and hope has been suspended and your dreams have been deferred and dried up like a raisin in the sun, how do you handle it? Something that you learn while you're in the fire mm -hmm. is you learn patience sometimes. Yes. Yes, sir. This time you learn patience and and not only do you learn patience, but you learn to pray. Yeah. I, don't, I don't mean like, you know, our father who are in heaven, and then you jump in bed and, you, and get in bed, and that's it. I know. No, 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 no. I, I'm talking about when you really pray. Yeah. Lord, help. I don't mean like what you used to do in, in the old church, the old niggas. Lord, here it is once again. Knee right. bent, body bowed. Yeah. I ain't bowed on my knees, but. Bow me down in the mud yeah. No, 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 no. It, 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 it's just, Lord, it, you don't have to pray long, but you just, Lord, help me. Yes, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. And he will hear your humble cry. Yes, he will. And so then, my sisters and brothers, when we look at this thing, we will learn God has a purpose wrapped up in our pain. I had not found that out. Exhibit number one, that when all hope is lost, and those of you who've been there for those who utilize your resources and, and your skills and, and whatever it was, you were there, you know, for them. And then when your time came, sometimes you have to weep alone. No, right, yeah. who, who is there to help me when, when I am I'm, I'm alone by myself and, and all help seemed to be now? Mm -hmm. Then God will step in yes, and just be still. You've been through this before. You've got a history of it. You've been through this before. 
And as a result, he got stronger and stronger. I've told you this before. When I have reached, there have been times when I reached the bottom of the bottom. And I wondered, what is it that I've done? But then I be still. And wait, don't move too soon now. You need to wait on God because the devil wants you to move quickly. And when you move too fast, that's when you make a mistake. But you wait on God. Don't make emotional decisions. And decisions when you're angry. Be still. And wait on God. Don't make a move too soon. But wait on Him. And I declare that He'll fight your battles. He'll fight your battles. So we have to be careful uh, with uh, who and what we listen to. Because sometimes we, you know, sometimes we have the, the prophet preachers and say, you know, just live a certain way. And all we have to do is just name it and claim it. Call it at home. Fault your prop, prosperity, gospel, health, and wellness. Be careful. Yeah, right. The word of God. Yeah. You can't make it on the flower bed and leave. You got to go through some things. Right, yeah. That's how we get stronger. Yeah. That's how we grow. My Lord. And then we find that the life is a refining process. It's a process that we have to go through the furnace in life. You have to go through it. It doesn't matter. It matters not. Uh, it's not so much if you're going through it, but it's when you're going through right. it. You're going through it all right now. Fire can accomplish one or two functions. It will destroy or it will refine. Yeah, That's when you find definition comes into your life. And really, sometimes we think that we can't handle it. But I'm telling you, he knows just how much you've been carrying. Yes, he, he designed you, he designed you, and he knows what you've been carrying. Amen. He knows what you struggle. You just don't give up. In the process, just hang on in there. God, you need purpose in what you have to go through. Secondly, that God has a, uh, uh, a, a unique presence. He has an all-seeing presence. It's all wrapped up in your, in your pain. Yes, sir. I've been preaching for hours, and I was going to mention, Dr. Glenn shared this with us, I believe, during the, during the December conference. Uh, he says that about to tell the story about the little boy went to Sunday school, his father, uh, one of the officers of the church, and uh, his father went to, uh, was asking the son, because this lesson, the teacher was teaching the lesson, and uh, the father asked the little son, says, uh, uh, says, son, says, what did you learn in Sunday school today? He says, uh, the teacher talked to us about the, uh, uh, some boys, three boys, uh, fell in the fire. <laughs> and, uh, and then he then went to, in a very indifferent uh, manner, just went on by his business. And dad said, Oh, that son, dad wanted, wanted his, uh, the little son to tell the rest of the story. Yes, he said, Then God, did the, the teacher tell you that God brought him out? He said, No. Yeah. When the son came out, he said, That God fell in with him. So, the God. That's what God will do for you. Right. Well, in your situation, when you are in a fiery fire, God will fall into you. Right. In, the, in the hospital room, yeah. God will fall into you. Yeah. Yeah. In a courtroom, God will right. fall into you. Yeah. Oh, when you're standing near that grave of the loved one, you have to walk away. God will, God will. fall into you. Yeah. Yeah. And when you have a when there's no friend that is left in the world, God will yeah. fall into yes, it. He'll be with you. He won't deliver you from it. Right. If he doesn't deliver you from it, he can if he, if he wants to, right. but then he will fall in with you. Right. Because he knows just no. how much yes. we can have. Amen. So, but we have to trust in him right. and give him time. So uh, we must trust in God. And, and trust him and, and give him time. You don't need to have an ace in the hole when you trust in it and give him time. You don't have to have a backup plan. You got to walk by faith and not by sight. If you can see the end from the beginning, as he does, we will choose his way every time. But it's a, it wouldn't be a walk by faith then. It would be a walk by sight. So then God has, he's standing there or it with his unseen presence. Yeah. That's the lesson that we learn. Mm -hmm. His purpose. Yeah. And he has this unseen presence in your life. Yeah. You may not 
You may not see him all the time, but he's there. Yes, he is. Watching you. Yeah. And if he allows it to come into your life, then you need to know that it's going to be for your good ultimately. Right. You may not feel that way, but ultimately it's going to work out for your good. Amen. It's called divine synergism. It's about divine energy coming together. Yeah. It's the good, the bad, the ups, the downs, right. uh, the all around, whatever it is that you're going through, your disappointments. I've told you before, sometimes people have misused you, and sometimes you have misused some right. people, right. sometimes unwittingly. People have taken advantage of you, and unwittingly, you have taken advantage of somebody else. But if you're a part of the family of God, if you're part of this distinguished club, and that is if you believe in him and you trust in him, that all you have to do, you'll know three things. That you have to trust him when you can't trace him, and it's temporary. The furnace is just a temporary situation for you. But with God present, it's always there. Sometimes, like the poet says, when right seems to be on the scaffold, and wrong is on the throne, yeah. and right seems to be on the scaffold, but God is standing in the shadow, right, right, right. watching over his own. Right, right. And then in his own good time, he's going to make it all right. Yeah, yeah. He's going to make it all right. But not only that, uh, God's unusual power. God's power is, is constant. Right. His ability to override evil and to right wrong and to rescue the perishing. One of the theologians put it this way. He says, when you are facing the furnace, don't worry because God has his eye on the thermometer right. and his finger on the thermostat. In yeah. other words, he's got everything under control. Yes. Yes. And nothing happens to him, nothing happens to you without uh, being, without, uh, uh, with his, and his surprise. He's not surprised because he already right. did all our steps yeah. in his word. Yeah. So these boys knew the king was great and powerful, but they knew that God was great. Right? Yeah, yeah. They, they knew that God was great. Right? Yeah, so whatever the doctor told you, God is great. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever the report is, God is great. Whatever that lawyer told you, God is yeah, greater. Yeah. Whatever your friends and family tell you, God is great. He's great. Amen. So my sisters and brothers, he, uh, God has an unfailing promise to yeah. In addition to his unique purpose, my sisters and brothers, uh, in addition to his unseen presence and his unusual power, God has an unfailing promise. The Bible says that these three young men were bound, thrown into the furnace, bound. Yeah. Most interesting, the Bible says that the men who threw them in were consumed by the fire. That's right. Those who threw the men yeah. were consumed by the fire. Right. You have to be careful with doing somebody else's dirty work. Right. 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 Be careful right. in life by letting people use you yeah. and manipulate you and doing somebody else's dirty work. Be careful how you allow people to use you right. and to manipulate you. Be careful how you allow other people to, to, uh, uh, to, to do their messed up stuff. And then they will throw bricks and hide their hands and they will use you. So when they were thrown in sooner than right now and quicker than at once, all of them was alert. All right, all right. And the angel began to stand up on tiptoe. I thank God that he didn't send an angel in the fire front. He sent his own son. Right, right. He, 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 didn't, he didn't send an angel. He sent his own son. My Verse 25 says, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men yeah. loose, walking in the midst of the fire. Right. And they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth one yeah. is like the Son of God. Right. Right. So next morning, then, the King Nebuchadnezzar looked in the furnace and just couldn't believe it. Right. That's what will happen, and uh, things will happen to you, to you in life, and then he will come to your rescue. Yeah. King couldn't, couldn't believe his eyes, and he saw three, put it through in three, but there were four loose in the frame. What did the frame do? The frame, they were bound, fully clothed, and tied and bound. What did it? What did the frame do? It loosened the shackles. Right? That's what life's furnaces will do for you when you're, when you're in the fire. Right. Sometimes you're bound. Right. 
and you have to go through something to get free from the shackles. Sometimes you have friends around you, God were friends, and, and then they will, the, when you go through the fire, many times they will scatter because they weren't friends anyway. Right, right. Right. Whatever it is that bound you, if you go through some things, God will loosen and bind yes. for you. Yes. It will loose your shackles yes. and set you free. Right. The Bible says they went in bound, but the next morning they were walking around loose. He will loose stuff. All right. yes. That's had to shackle all of these years. Yes. Sometimes members that are uh, uh, some type of unforgiving sin, unforgiving hang up, whatever it is that's binding you. Don't let him send you through the fire. Right. Mm. Remove the shackles. So the fire means that the furnace did not, uh, uh, was loose, took a loose the shackles. So you wonder why, why you're in the furnace? Maybe it's because God is trying to set you free from yeah, some right. things right. that are making you. Yeah. Maybe, that's, maybe that's what God is, is telling us this morning. Yeah. Somebody yeah. needs to be made free today. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody needs to be set free of some issues yeah. that's plaguing your life that has you bound and you need to be set free. Yeah. If you don't do it, then he will do it for you. Sometimes he'll run folks away from you. He'll run things away from you, but he'll do it in the fire. Yeah. If you want a, a testimony, you must be willing to pass through the fire. The three Hebrew boys needed the testimony yeah. that Daniel even needed to hear. Daniel was not present in chapter 3, but Daniel was present in chapter 6. Well, he was thrown in the lion's den. Yeah. I would think that he had some influence, that the boys had some influence on Daniel. Mm -hmm. My sisters and brothers, when you go through the fire, you ought to be able to testify that God yeah. made it. Oh, he's able to receive yes, it and wonder it above all that we're able to ask all things. Yes, yes. You remember when he said, Fret not, Psalm 37. Right. Fret not thyself. Because of evil doers. Right. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Right. Remember Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things. All things. It's in you. I can through him. Through him, Christ, who strengthened you. Yes. And you'd be surprised how powerful you are. Because great is he that's in you, right. that he that is in the world. Right. It's not just circumstances, but what you do about your circumstances, God will show up. Yes, will. And when he shows up, I feel like he'll show up. Thank Be close to that. Yeah, yeah. These three Hebrew boys showed up to tell you that God is able, yeah. that God is faithful, yeah. and God can handle your fire. Right. Whatever your fire is, God can handle it. One thing we need to know that when the Hebrew boys went out of the furnace, yeah. Jesus stayed in. My He's Lord. in your furnace. Yeah, yeah. He's been waiting on you, whatever it is that you're dealing with. Jesus. God is a word for somebody. Don't worry about your furnace. He is already in the furnace waiting on you. Right. Anybody here knows that He's an on time God. Yes, He's already yeah. there. Yeah. That's what he did on Calvary. My Lord. Adam put us all in the furnace. Mm -hmm. Furnace of sin. Yeah. Adam. Yeah. Put us all in Nebuchadnezzar's fire furnace. My Lord. But God didn't send an angel. Yeah. He sent it very best that he had. Yes. You know? He sent his only begotten yes. son. Yes. Oh, Thank he you, was the fourth man yes. in the furnace. Yes. He said, waiting on you. Oh, yeah. I thank God for the fourth man. My Lord. He came to the yes, church. Yes, he did. Died that yeah. we might have a right to the tree of life, that we can be extricated from our furnaces of life, of very, of very various kinds. Yeah. Your furnace is not like my furnace. Right. Never said as I has a furnace for you, and he has a furnace for me. My and what will work for me won't work for you. Right. He's the right. fourth man yeah. in the furnace. Yes. Yeah. He's the spoken one of God. Yeah. God would raise him through the power of the Holy Spirit. He raised his son up from the grave. Yeah. And he can raise you up from yeah. your grave, from All your right. father, from your situation. Right. He's the fourth one, the fourth one. He's the spoken word of creation. Yeah. One. 
He said, how can the cause out? He gave the very best that he had. Right. Express image of this holy countenance. It was heaven's best jewel. I offer him to you today. Mm-hmm. He's the only big God, mother, father. Full yes. of grace and truth. Yes. The fourth one is the fourth man in the furnace. Mary's baby. Yes. Joseph's stepson. Right. He's the fourth one. John the Baptist. Cousin. He's the fourth one in the furnace waiting on you. Tell whatever it, it is. Tell Come it. what may. He's yes. Abraham's friend. Jacob's child. He's in that furnace waiting on you. All right. He's Moses burning bush and Aaron's raw. Yeah. David's music and Solomon's wisdom. He's there waiting on you. He's in the furnace waiting on you. Yes. yes. I told you last Sunday. He's Jeremiah's mom. All right. He's Zinko's wheel. Yes. And Daniel's stone. <laughs> That's who he is. He's the fourth one. Mark served him. Yeah. Matthew's king. He's uh, Luke's great position. Yeah. That's who he is. He's yeah. yeah. Walking around in the clay yeah. in your situation yeah. and in my situation. Right. John would be first. Yes. And I offer him to you today. There's yeah. one that is outside of the ark of safety. You can just know. accept him as your Lord and Savior. Just right. believe that he is the son of the living yes, God. He died. And he got up yes, he with did. all power all in right. his hand. Amen. He's there. He's there. All we have to do is to believe. Yeah. And he'll come to your rescue. Yes, he all will. he'll come in the middle of your fire. Yes. And yes. cool, he's the fire chief yes, he in your fire. Yes. Oh, he's asked come to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And so I stand as a beggar to tell other beggars right. yeah. where they can find grace. Accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. Yes, sir. Our site will have how you can become a member of this church, but we want you to become a member of some Bible believing church. Amen. Where you will be fed the word of God. That's right. our charge. Yes. Is to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. And he said, The day you hear my voice, hard not your heart. Amen. He's knocking right now mm-hmm. on the door of somebody's heart. Yes. This is the only time that you have. Tomorrow, it's not promised to you. And I offer him to you today. He's the one. If you can learn these lessons that's learned in the fire that these Hebrew boys went through, All right. he can be your fire chief yes, my yes. in your fire. All we have to do is trust him. Trust yes. him. Shall we pray? God, our Father, we thank you for this time of sharing. Yes. We thank you because you're so loving and you're so kind and oh, yes. yes. We know we can trust you, God, through the sunshine and through the rain. Oh, yes. You walk with us. Thank you. Regardless of the plenty or regardless of the poverty, you walk with us. Even in gladness and in our sorrow, oh God, Hold our hands as we go through these turbulent, unprecedented times. Regardless of comfort and misery, we will trust in you. We'll give you time. Regardless of the day or the night, we know that you're there in the shadows watching over your home. Oh, my God, we love you. We bless you. And we praise your mighty name. Yes. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance unto thee. And give thee 